Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Johnston, and I am the general manager here at Capitol Mall. And I'd, first, I'd like to say we are absolutely thrilled. We are thrilled to be hosting the September Chamber Forum in honor of Washington Retail Month. <laughs> Retail is such a vital part of of my job and, and the mall's business and you know and uh, the community as well. So uh, it's great to see the enthusiasm and uh, the turnout for this event. Um, before uh, I uh, introduce our first speaker, I'd like to invite you all to uh, take with you our lovely Capitol Mall swag. The weather participated and turned cold right, right about the time we wanted to give these out, so that works out great. But uh, again, we're, uh, we're, just, we're thrilled to have everyone here, and I'd like, we'll kick this thing off. I'd like to introduce the chair of the Thurston County Chamber Board of Trustees, Joanna West. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you to the Capitol Mall for hosting us here. I'd also like to thank the ambassadors for all of your help getting us registered and signed in today, a little different than our normal spot, no tickets, but you guys still did a fantastic job, so if you are here, please stand up and wave. I'd also like to thank TAGS Awards and Specialties for their um, ambassador sponsorship. Thank you, TAGS. And if I could draw your attention to the table tents in the middle, or the trifold things in the middle of your table about information about upcoming events and chamber news. Next month, we will be back at the Red Lion for the candidates forum. We will be hearing um, about the county commissioner's race, so that should certainly be interesting. Um, right back here at, or right back at the Hotel RL. And I would like to now invite our forum sponsor, Window Genie, Linda and Spencer Zeman, to come on up. <laughs> or just Linda. My name is Linda Zeman. I am co-owner of Window Genie of Olympia. I have uh, been blessed to bring a new, beautiful, healthy baby boy into the world, uh, but I am feeling equally as privileged to put on my power pumps and come present to you all wonderful people uh, again. I've been out of the world for a little while, but I'm glad to be back. Thank you. <laughs> As always, Window Genie cleans windows and a whole lot more. Uh, we do everything to get your home or business looking sparkly clean, uh, but we also do things to make you sparkle. Holiday lights are coming into play right now. Let's see if this works. There we go. Your holiday lights is an option that we've uh, provided to our customers for a couple of years right now. We are a full service type of company. We provide custom cut lighting. Uh, full service during the holiday season, uh, removal of those lights, and storage throughout the holiday season, or going into the next holiday season. So you don't have to worry about anything. But what I am excited to present to you today is Oello Lighting Solutions. It is permanent lighting for your home or business, and it is a year-round lighting solution that looks great. No HOA is going to have a problem. Your business is going to look great all year. I'll put that video on here in a second. There we go. We're going to hear from some customers out in Utah. So probably the most recent time that we changed um, the colors and set timers was for July 4th. And I had those set for the entire week um, with an actual custom program of the red, white, and blue chasing. And they turned on every evening for the whole week of July 4th. And so we use 
our lights really just to show things that we're involved in, um, things that we support, um, event. We put um, a little lights on our business as well, um, just to kind of make a statement and have them stick out a little bit more than the neighboring businesses <laughs> to attract attention. It allows us to make a statement. Okay, that didn't go as planned, but that's technology for you, that's fine. Uh, what's nice about OLA lighting is that it is wireless, you won't see any wires. It is completely customizable at your discretion. You can use an app on your phone and use your lights all year to stand out, uh, whether for your business or in your neighborhood. Uh, if you'd like to see the lights, they are back at our booth and they're fun to play with. Uh, you're welcome to use the app on our phone to play with the lights. Thank you so much for your attention. Have a great day. Thank you, Linda and Window Genie, for your sponsorship, and we're glad that to see you back in your power pumps. Next up, I'd like to invite Sean Paget with Wright Systems. Wright Systems is our program sponsor today. All right, I am Sean Paget, and I got to tell you, this is um, kind of nostalgic for me. I, I'm really enjoying. There's so many familiar faces, but being here in the Capitol Mall, I'm old enough, and from this community, old enough to remember when the mall didn't exist, and when it it it, it came to be, and I was in junior high. I grew up in the Griffin community, out Steamboat Island, way out. We used to ride our bicycles all the way in to the Capitol Mall so that we could follow the Jefferson girls around the mall. We wouldn't talk to them, but we could look at them and wave, and then we'd, for about an hour, and then we'd ride 15 miles back to Steamboat Island. Anyway, it's, I'm, I'm glad to be here at Capitol Mall and uh, to present our company. Uh, Wright Systems has been around for 25 years, and we were founded out of government contracts servicing the state of Washington primarily initially. Uh, the business has grown tremendously over those 25 years. We're headquartered out in Hawks Prairie. Uh, currently, we used to be in, in Motman Industrial for many years, and we have five locations throughout the Pacific Northwest, about 100 employees. Uh, and I've been with Wright Systems for 20 years. It has been a fantastic run. It's, it's uh, for me, really rewarding to uh, be able to do what I do in the community that I grew up in. So one of the things I've really enjoyed over the last, year, last couple years, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of move this along here. Oh, you want to put? There we go. Wright Systems has developed tremendous expertise, and we've had great success in building out our professional services organization, in large part in the enterprise space and larger mid-market customers. And for that reason, we haven't talked to a lot of the people in this room uh, about serving your needs. Uh, one of the things we recognized in the marketplace is that the small-medium business is a, is a uh, segment of the marketplace that's really underserved with regard to technology. Uh, automation, cloud services, a lot of the things that we have at our disposal today sort of painted a picture for us that, that gosh, we, we need to take this expertise that we have in the enterprise space and bring it down into the small, medium business market. And so we've spent the last two years building out a help desk and uh, d devoting resources to that small, medium business space uh, while leveraging a lot of our enterprise expertise. So to keep it really simple, we've really broken it down into three basic areas. We have cloud, whether it's private cloud or public cloud, we don't care. Network, could be wired, could be wireless, could be both. And workspace. Workspace could be your traditional PC, laptop, plugged in at the office, or it could be desktop as a service, where you log, into a, log in from some sort of uh, portal. Uh, and have access to a virtual desktop. 
Many of our small, medium, in, in the enterprise space, many of our customers will purchase one of these services. In the small, medium business space, what we're seeing is an all-in approach. And so with that, oh, again, I got I get it right. So the, the, the system, the, the uh, best practices that we've learned in the enterprise space, it's the same. Whether it's Starbucks, the state of Washington, University of Washington, Washington State University, or Claris Ice Center across town. It's the same approach. So that's what I'll leave you with here. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, we do offer a discovery. One of the things that, that again, I'm, I, I'm really enjoying is going out to our local businesses and talking to our local business owners and leaders and offering up uh, an assessment. So we come in and we have a t a, both a technical and a, uh, call it a social assessment of, of how you're using technology and how we might leverage technology to improve uh, your business and ultimately profitability, right? Uh, you can come talk to me or my colleague in the back of the room, Mr. Chris Grassman. He's been with us for about four years and doing a great job of uh, telling the right system story. So thanks again. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sean. And Chris, now you know part of the right system story is Sean chasing girls at the mall. <laughs> I would now like to invite Bert Fisher, the CEO of Our Community Credit Union, up. The, Our Community Credit Union is today's media sponsor. Good afternoon. Uh, no power pumps, got my normal shoes on today. First thing I'd like to start with is raise your hand if you are a member of a credit union. Okay, for everybody out there that is, thank you very much. Um, and from our standpoint, it doesn't make any difference whether it's uh, OB, Harborstone, Washington State Employees, Twin Star, all those guys run great shops. But thank you for that opportunity. Anybody that isn't, you should take a look at us. Uh, credit unions are not for profit. In particular, with our community credit union, we've been around for 77 years. We were originally chartered as Simpson Employees Credit Union, a timber-based charter, and we were chartered December 3rd, 1941. And since then, well, actually in our first year, we did $912 in loans and had about $2,000 in deposits. And today we have eight branches. We're close to $400 million in assets, and we spread out over uh, four counties. We're in Mason County, Grace Harbor County, King County, and now in Thurston County, which is our newest operation, Steamboat Island. Um, part of credit use with being non-cooperatives is if you have a deposit there, you're actually an owner of that credit union. And with us, with originally being Simpson Employees Credit Union, part of that was providing service and financial means to the underserved in the community. And, and a gentleman by the name of Charlie Savage started the process for Simpson way back in 1940. And what he found is their workers were having trouble getting loans just for basic things like a refrigerator, for a washer, for some work on their houses. So he went out and made the push to farm, form the charter. So we were originally, like I said, uh, um, Simpson Employees Credit Union. We switched over to a community charter in 2006, which opened up for anybody member of the community living in the community. And then in 2010, uh, we switched over to what's now called a, a state charter, and we had changed our name to our community credit union. Now, part of the things that we provide, we're a full-service credit union. We do consumer loans. We do business loans. Uh, last year, the credit union performed over 1,600 hours of community service work to 53 different organizations. Um, with community in our name, there's a lot of things that we do to keep our community safe. We've bought multiple dogs for the Mason County Sheriff's Department for their canines. We've bought a dog for the Grays Harbor. We've purchased canine vehicles for Shelton Police Department, McCleary, um, also for Mason County. And with keeping the community safe, there's just no better way to do it. Um, anybody out there that manages employees, 
You will know that purchasing a dog from a volunteer standpoint is your cheapest employee. You're going to get seven to ten years of use out of them. They aren't going to talk back. You aren't going to have any HR issues, and the medical bills are going to be pretty minimal. Um, with that, the other thing I'd like to cover with you, if you get a chance, we know you always have a lot of variety of choices in which you can use for a financial institution. Um, from our standpoint, we get that. We understand people can have the same core values, same skill sets that were required. I think the difference for everybody is the people that you employ and the magic's in the people. If you get a chance, we'd love to have an opportunity to provide service to you. Um, our pledge to you is that we will work to deserve your business and we'll work very diligently and hard to try to continue to deserve it in the future. We're excited about being in Thurston County. Uh, great thanks to the Thurston County Chamber of Commerce for all the support they've given our organization and our people. And if you get a chance, stop by, see if we can provide the difference for you. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Thank you, Bert, our community's credit union. Welcome to our community. And if you haven't seen their location out there on Steamboat, that whole new area, there's lots of new stuff popping up out there, so I encourage you to check that out. And with that, I would like to invite up David Schaffert, CEO and President of the Thurston County Chamber. Well, good afternoon, everyone. How's the food? Excellent. Thank you, Joanna, and uh, welcome. It's really a pleasure to be in a uh, unique location today. A, a very big and special thank you to Capital Mall uh, for, uh, and the entire team for some of the support on logistics. Uh, it is not a logist it's not logistically easy to pick up and move for one month and uh, uh, to accomplish everything we need to. So thank you, it was wonderful. And to the Washington Retail Association, uh, Renee Sunday, who I'll introduce here in, in, real brief, in a moment, but uh, for uh, their support as well in recognizing uh, Retail Month. So I'm just gonna introduce Renee and get off the stage and we'll get on with the great program. Of course, we're gonna recognize Retail Month and Renee's gonna set the stage for that and she'll provide an introduction to our special guest, Lisa Bridge from Ben Bridges Jewelers. Renee, come on up. You, you, had, the, you had it right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, David. It's great to be here in the middle of Capitol Mall celebrating Retail Month with all of you. On behalf of the Washington Retail Association, we are pleased to partner with the Thurston County Chamber and with the mall to highlight the retail industry and the impacts that it has on the economy and the state's economy. Um, retail, I think we all know, is an important part of every community, whether it's a small community, a large community, urban or rural. We all experience retail on a daily basis. And although the industry is experiencing massive change and transformation, the growth of retail continues to set pace with the state's low unemployment rate and strong consumer confidence. Get this right. We're fortunate in Washington State, we are home to some of the nation's top retail leaders. Um, but it's important to remember that 98.6% of retailers are actually small businesses that employ under 50 employees. But whether the, the household names that you see up there that we recognize or the hundreds of corporate retailers that position themselves in Washington State because we have such a strong consumer base or the thousands of Main Street retailers serving our communities and drawing tourists, Washington State has made an indelible mark around the globe. What many folks don't realize is that retail is the nation's largest private sector employee, employer, excuse me, um, supporting one in every four jobs. Retail sales and use tax are a primary driver in Washington State's economy, providing 51% of the state's general operating fund. Retail sales tax support many of our local communities, our cities, our counties, 
and certainly help with bringing in revenues to support some of our much needed services that we all rely on daily. In 2017 alone, consumers drove $155.3 billion in taxable uh, retail sales as well as $19.8 billion in wages into the state's economy. September is why we're here. It's all about Retail Month, and it's the second year, many of you may not know this, that the governor has proclaimed September Careers in Retail Month. Just as the industry is, is really experiencing rapid change, the job opportunities that are associated with a career in retail are also really evolving. Technology is, is carving out new career paths and really driving opportunities for jobs such as e -commerce, in e-commerce, web and app development, and information technologies, just to name a few of those, those new jobs. The industry offers a broad diversity of options, whether it's, it's part-time, um, entry-level work, but also management and executive-level positions. And we're seeing more and more retailers looking for opportunities to train and offer tuition assistance that help employees turn a job into a career path. An estimated 51,000 retail job openings are expected to be filled in the state in the next five years, well, actually ending 2021, with forecasts indicating that 147 retail jobs will be created this holiday season right here in Thurston County. So if you know someone looking for a job, there are going to be jobs available in the retail industry. Last year, uh, Washington Retail launched a partnership with Employment Security and WorkSource Washington to spotlight careers in retail. Uh, together we launched a new website, WashingtonRetailCareers.com, and the partnership this year has been even stronger than it was that last year. Uh, what I'd like to do is encourage you to stop by the, the table that we have in the back of the room. If you don't know a lot about the Washington Retail Association, we've got information about the association but we'd also like those of you that are interested in posting jobs on the site to find out how to do that or that are wanting to connect to potential jobs or someone you know that's looking for a job. So now is the good part. I get the pleasure of introducing our guest speaker today. Lisa Bridge is the President and Chief Operating Officer of Ben Bridge Jeweler. As the fifth generation in the company, Lisa has successfully honored the heritage of Ben Bridge while driving it towards future growth. Lisa graduated with honors from Washington University in St. Louis and obtained her graduate gemologist degree in residence at the Gemological Institute of America. Lisa embraces the balance of 106 years of Ben Bridge history and the needs of today's customers and associates. Though much has changed in the retail industry, the company's focus on their team continues to be the center stage and the key to their success. So please help me give a very warm Thurston County welcome to Lisa Bridge. Well, I am delighted to be here, and as everyone is sharing their own personal stories here in, in the Capitol Mall, uh, my father came down when we opened our store here about 40 years ago, and the claim that my grandfather, my mom's dad, makes was that it was because of my mother that we opened this store because she had graduated from school and the only place she could get a teaching job uh, was, was down in this area. And so thus my dad, who was still courting my mother at the time, had to come and, uh, and spend some time down here. And so they, they you know, started their, their new life down here. And so we're very proud to have our store just uh, through the parted curtains over there. Uh, but we've been in this area for a very long time. As Renee said, I'm Lisa Bridge, and I'm fifth generation in our family's business. And I really think that we've been around for 106 years because we have continued to evolve. 
We've stayed very true to our core values, our integrity, our community involvement, our quality, our service. Those things haven't changed over 106 years, but a lot of other pieces of the business where, how we sell, what exactly we're selling, that has, has shifted and evolved. And so we're thinking about thinking about uh, what makes us exist for this long. It's really that, that focus on our core values, but really it's our people. And our people make the greatest difference. Uh, as a retail business, it's all about what experience do you have? And we're very lucky to have wonderful, wonderful people in our business. And we'll share a little bit about how they make the difference in our philosophy um, this morning. So just to give you a brief bit of history, going back 106 years, my great-great-grandfather was a watchmaker. And he journeyed across the country, setting and maintaining the pocket watches for train conductors. Seattle was the end of the line, so Seattle's where he set up shop. And he set up a small watch shop. Uh, just a block up from where our downtown store is today. And so you have the reliable jeweler and the reliable optician uh, sharing space. Uh, so my great-great-grandfather is the gentleman on the left, and Sam Silverman, and we're not totally sure who the man in the cowboy hat is, but we assume that he is the optician. And in that era, they shared space because they used the same machine to cut the crystal. Uh, for your pocket watch or for your eyeglasses. And so often you would find the jeweler and the optician sharing space. So while Sam was really the, really understood uh, about the business, understood about watchmaking, uh, it was his son-in-law, a man by the name of Ben Bridge, who understand, understood retail and came into the business in uh, right around 1920 and it became Silverman and Bridge for a short time. And then Sam's health declined and he needed better air. So where do you go for better air from Seattle? LA. <laughs> Seems only reasonable, but in the 1920s, Los Angeles had uh, the right climate for, uh, for his health. And so the, the story goes that as soon as the train was leaving the station, the name was changed from Silverman and Bridge to Ben Bridge. So here in this photo, you see Ben in, in the shop, and Ben turned our store from just a watch shop into a full-line jewelry store. And Ben grew the business. He was, a, he was the presence in the store. Uh, it really was every interaction. He was involved with every customer who walked through the door and made sure that they had a great experience. Sam had two sons, and so Sam's great dream, or Ben, sorry, Ben had two sons. Ben's great dream was to have two stores for his two sons. So we opened a, a store in Bremerton. We were a naval family, and so we said, oh, that's the perfect spot to put store number two, is, is over in Bremerton. And in that era, there wasn't a whole lot going on in, Brem in Bremerton. So my grandfather, being the younger of the two boys, uh, was the one who went out there. And to this day, whenever I tell my grandfather, oh, I've got so much to do, I'm busy, I'm running here, I'm running there, he said, Lisa, when we had that store in Bremerton, we were, people got paid on a Friday, Saturday was busy, Sunday we were closed, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday were deadly. He said, I'd polish every piece of silver, I'd swept the floors, I'd called every customer I could, and that was terrible. And he said, since we've closed that store, I've never been bored a day in my life since, and it's a great thing. And, and so I said, all right, note taken, I'm you know, happy, to, uh, happy to be busy. Um, so we ended up having uh, Herb, my great uncle, Bob, and Ben, all three in one store. Now, my grandfather could get along with anybody, but Herb and Ben were both the head honcho types, and, and the two of them conflicted and, and butted heads. And so Herb decided, you know what, I'm going to go and learn this business elsewhere. So he ended up taking a job with another jewelry chain uh, in Denver. He was going to manage multiple stores for them, learn what is it like to run multiple stores. 
Well, Ben didn't like the idea of that and his then two of three grandsons leaving. And so he called a family meeting. He walked into the store, put the keys on the counter, and he said, I'm out. I said, what? What do you mean? He said, this business is meant to bring the family together, not drive us apart. I would be upset about it too. Uh, and, and said, you know, this, this business is about our family. And so turned over the business to his two sons at 23 and 29. His whole life was wrapped up in the business, didn't even have his own personal checking account. It was all within the business and turned it all over. Ends up being a tremendously good decision because the two of them were highly capable and, and grew the business in an incredible way. What you see here is the building where our, our downtown Seattle store is now and has been since the building was built in the 1920s. In this photo, you can see our store is down, kind of a, a tiny sliver of a store, and we've continued to grow and move to the corner over time. And we'll go to the... So there you have Herb and Bob uh, out front of the storefront as we begin to expand the business. We've, we were a credit jeweler, and so it was you know, often a dollar down, a dollar a week uh, to pay for, for your new piece of jewelry. And when we started to grow and we decided to open our second Ben Bridge store, we were going to open our second store down at South Center which was about, you know, it was 20 miles away. And for the first time, we weren't going to have someone with the last name Bridge in the store, managing the store. We said, well, how are we going to do this? How are we going to have a, a store without someone with the last name Bridge? Well, fortunately, we had this gentleman, Orly Solomon. And Orly was extraordinary. Uh, Orly passed away a couple of months ago at the age of, I guess it was last month, at the age of 94. And he was a part of the business for 50 years. He retired at the age of 86. Uh, and, and Orly was just magic, kind of small, Yoda-like man, deep, grovelly voice. He was amazing. And what Orly showed was if you have wonderful people, if you have people who take ownership, if you have people who are passionate and knowledgeable and care about your customers, then that's going to be the way to grow. because. You didn't need someone with the name Bridge in the South Center store because you had Orly. And Orly felt like it was his name over that door. And that was really the key to our ability to start to grow. If you have great people and you delegate to them and you really honor them with that opportunity to take that ownership, then there's no stopping where you're able to go. That's how we've been able to grow over all of these years. It's empowering. It's giving that sense of ownership to your team, making sure that they feel invested in the success, and making sure that you provide them with the education and the opportunities. We were chatting with uh, then the, the head of education for the Gemological Institute of America, and they said that we were actually their, their biggest customer, that we spent more on education, our gemological education, than anybody else in the country. And we said, well, we're not, we're not across the whole country. How is it possible that we spend more than anyone else? But we have always believed in creating professionals. We've always believed in providing those opportunities for growth. And we were talking with another retailer in the country and they said, well, aren't you afraid that you're going to invest all of this money in somebody and then they're gonna leave? And my dad replied to him, well, I'm more concerned that I'm not going to invest in education and then they're going to stay. <laughs> we really want to provide that knowledge and, and the expertise so we can take care of our customers and so that our associates can continue to grow and be challenged because we believe it's not just uh, a job for today or tomorrow but that this can really be a career. So we grew, we continued to grow throughout the, throughout the West um, and continued to see that if you have the right people, they'll go out and make those connections and they'll go out and build the business uh, in an incredible way. 
So the next generation came to join the business. So I mentioned that my father came and was part of the opening team here in Olympia. That's the tall, handsome gentleman on the left. Uh, my mother, who has a passing resemblance to somebody else I know, um, they're standing next to him. And then his cousin, John, uh, his wife, Bobby, and their daughter, Rebecca. So the two of them came into the business, uh, took over in about 1990 as co-CEOs, and grew the business at an incredible pace, um, about three stores a year, really promoting from within, providing opportunities for growth um, from within the store. And we're very lucky because we have incredible longevity with our business um, because I think we believe in our people and we treat them with respect and give opportunities to continue to grow. We had an, um, an unusual but an amazing event in 2000. We became, we had been family owned for all of that time and in 2000 we became part of Berkshire Hathaway. And so the gentleman there on the right uh, is Warren Buffett. And it was a perfect partnership to become part of Berkshire because Berkshire believes in businesses that are well run and have a great leadership and allows them to continue to operate um, as if they are continue to be family run. You know, Warren always says that assume that you're running this business as if, as if it's your family's only asset for the next three generations. He has that long term vision that allows us to continue to build a strong business moving forward. And so fortunately, it's been a wonderful, wonderful partnership. And, and we're very par proud to be owned by Berkshire Hathaway, though, you know, still family run. We also have grown to not only have our Ben Bridge stores, but also Pandora stores. And so Pandora, which we have here in the store, is a beautiful jewelry line that in 2010 we decided, well, we're going to test this, this whole Pandora thing. We hear from our friends on the East Coast that it's really big. We'll try it. We tested it in 2010 in March with about eight stores. And within a month we said, yep, this has to be everywhere. So we rolled Pandora out to all of our stores, and by the end of the year opened our first Pandora-only store. And now we have about 45 Pandora stores across the West, and it's been a wonderful experience to work with Pandora and for us to be able to teach them about the retail business and about the, certainly the West Coast. And then we've also learned a lot from their systems and how things work across the, across the world. We also, as part of that, so here we are, we have stores in 11 Western states, and also we have one in um, one area in Canada. Um, so we opened our Canadian stores um, about five years ago now. And so we have five stores up in BC. We are evolving as a business, as really most, most retailers are, um, but I think we're able to evolve because that's been our tradition. Because as a business, we have known who we are at a really deep level, but continued to shift and evolve our business. So some of the ways we're doing that is in our brand messaging is how are we communicating? How are we telling who and what we are and why we're different? We're shifting in how we're telling our stories because we have incredible stories to tell. We're evolving our store experience. We are evolving our merchandise and how do we find the right pieces? How do we make sure that you find the right piece? And then our back of house technology system. And so from a brand messaging standpoint, we did a a big study a couple of years ago with some interesting outcomes. So we talked to people who were our customers and we talked to people who I would like to say are potential or future customers. And we said, you know, what do you know about Ben Bridge? Who are we? Why are we different? And we found a few things. One, we found that our customers know us, love us. Our customers know why we're different and why we're unique. But people who hadn't shopped with us didn't necessarily know why we were different from anybody else. We think that we spent all this time spreading the word and, and getting it out there, but if people hadn't had our unique experience, they didn't know why we were different than another jeweler um, 
down the street. And so also we found out that they didn't generally know the difference between other jewelers either. So we thought, well, we need to be telling our unique story differently. And our philosophy of how we want to operate and our philosophy of everything that goes into creating a beautiful piece of jewelry and a wonderful experience, I think is uniquely different. We thought about, if you look at jewelry advertising, so much of it is the perfect bended knee moment. You're on top of a hill and you're spinning around and your hair is blowing perfectly in the breeze. And we said, that's a great moment. But really, what jewelry is about is every moment after that. Every perfectly imperfect moment is really what jewelry is about. It's about those moments that that piece of jewelry is going to live with you in your life. I think about important life moments that I've had, and I carefully select pieces of jewelry, whether it's a pair of earrings that my grandparents gave me, or it's a watch that my parents gave me, and I can feel them with me when I'm wearing that piece of jewelry. And because those pieces are a part of all of these new moments, that jewelry takes on more meaning over time. So we decided we really need to tell that story and that philosophy. So I'd love to share with you um, our concept of for life. The perfect moment isn't scripted. It sneaks up on you unexpectedly. It's a brilliant sparkle that flashes through dirt or worse. A quiet pause in the midst of chaos. A wash of contentment that takes you completely by surprise. In fact, it's not even a single moment at all, but a culmination of memories built up over time and perfectly captured within a memento of love. Every chip, every nick, every scratch, they only add to its value. Distinctive embellishments entirely unique to your life. And through every one of them, we're right here with you. Generations of jewelers, gemologists, and watchmakers with a passion for the pieces we curate and the people who wear them. Because to us, fine jewelry is meant to endure and be enjoyed for life. Thank you. I think that speaks to what jewelry does on a really deep level. That it's about all of those amazing and, and special moments that you wouldn't... Those are some special moments, you know, we got good, uh, good sound effects for that. And so wanted to use this concept of for life to share all of those wonderful moments um, of life that jewelry exists. And so thinking about how can we show some of those images, Ooh, there we go. So last year we started this campaign and started using some of these uh, amazing perfect moments or perfectly imperfect moments, whether you're having your lo mein on your couch um, or you are out for a special event and, and eating salsa that your jewelry lives as a part of. Um, these great shots, um, vibrant and colorful and feel very different than I think your, your traditional um, images of jewelry, but speaks to who we are that one of the most, I think, controversial internally images was the image here in the bottom of somebody wearing their ring and gardening. And, and, and everyone said, well, you can't, you can't have a picture of somebody gardening in their ring. We don't want them to hurt their ring or something to happen. We said, well, here she's like picking some, you know, some mint off of a plant and we're not, she's not doing hard uh, work with her, her ring. But our jewelry is made in a way that it's able to withstand your, your every day. And one of the things that we pride ourselves on is our quality and is our quality control. And so we need to tell people about that. We're renowned within the jewelry industry as having the tightest quality control of anyone out there. We are like the good housekeeping seal of approval if somebody is able to create a piece of jewelry that passes our quality control. Um, 
but I'm not sure that we've done the best job of sharing that. We have a lot of best kept secrets and we need to do a better job as a company of sharing those uniquenesses, those best kept secrets. And so one of the ways that we're doing that is by really looking at can we define who and what we are, what our brand promise is. And then we looked at it and we said, well, let's boil it down to five things. So we've called them our five C's. The five C's of what makes Benbridge unique. That first C is customer commitment. Customer commitment is absolutely where, where we start. Um, the focus and the attention on each one of our customers who walks through our doors and the in the ability for every one of our associates to take care of that person, to take the responsibility, take that ownership over that customer, that is really important, that customer commitment. The, the next one is craftsmanship. And I'll show you in a bit so how we're telling those stories of craftsmanship uh, and how are we telling how a piece of jewelry is really made. Because I think so often we have abstracted this really incredible story so far that we've taken something that came from the earth that was unleashed in its beauty by humans and then we put it in a little white box and we say, isn't it pretty? And yeah, it is really pretty. But if you know everything that went into creating that piece, there is a tremendous amount of value. The, the next C is community consciousness. And this is very important to who and what we are. We've always believed in being the local jeweler. We have believed in being part of the community in whichever community we're involved. And so we brought in, an, uh, I brought in a new VP of marketing earlier this year and we were talking through how we're involved. She said, well, you know, is there one charity, is there one organization that you, you know, are, are really involved with that we should be sharing that we should be talking about? And I said, well, no, we're involved in hundreds of different charities and organizations because it's whatever is important to each store, to each associate across, across our company. We've done it because that's what's right, not because we need to put it on our website or, or make a slogan. It's just who we are. My great uncle Herb had a plaque on his desk that read, service is the rent we pay for the space we occupy on earth. Service is the rent we pay for the space we occupy on earth. That it's so central to who we are that giving back is, is key. And whatever way that is for each person or each store is going to be slightly different. So that community consciousness is, is huge. Curation. And we have to find the most beautiful, the most unique pieces to offer. We travel the world. We were talking earlier at our table about our Toscano collection, which is an Italian gold collection that's made up of 60 different artisans in Italy that create this collection. Our fashion buyer, Laura, who's been with us for about 37 years, has wonderful relationships with each one of these craftsmen. And so when you go and you walk the show or you go and meet people, someone, they always start asking, they go, oh, where is Laura? Where is Laura? Uh, because she has this wonderful relationship with each and every one of them. And customization. We will go to the ends of the earth for our customers to make sure they have that perfect piece, whether that means finding something, whether it means selecting your diamond or your colored gemstone separately, or whether it means designing something from scratch. And I'll share a little bit of an early preview of something we're playing with this, starting this fall in customization. And so we have been refreshing this and evolving our messaging. So I wanted to share with you a, a video we did this year that indicates you know, some of those key, key points that I was just sharing you about the five C's. The most meaningful jewelry tells a story of a relationship. Which is why Benbridge hand selects pieces from artisans around the world for the beauty they add to every chapter of life.
So trying to share some of our uniqueness. So why, why you want to come and shop um, and be a part of Ben Bridge. And Go. And so storytelling, what are those unique stories that we have to offer? And so in the last year, we went and visited some of our partners to, to tell those stories. So we went to Italy and we followed one of our craftsmen and, and learned about his passion for the jewelry that he makes. We went to, um, with me to Thailand. I have a collection in our stores that started about three and a half years ago that's fun colored gemstone jewelry uh, because I was looking at my friends and the jewelry they were wearing and it was beautiful, but it wasn't necessarily real. I didn't feel like they could come and buy fine jewelry. That, that had to be some heavy, important occasion that they came and bought fine jewelry for. And I said, no, jewelry is, is something that you should embrace and you should buy for yourself um, and you should be wearing every day. And so, one, had a wonderful experience of creating this, this collection in our stores. And then the final, the final video is we went and followed Kimonia, one of our uh, diamond craftswomen in Botswana, and told the story of diamond cutting in Botswana and the impact that it's made on her, her family, and on the country. And so the, those stories, uh, being able to tell them in, an, in a new way and in a different way. So through video, storytelling, and then also wanting to tell them throughout our store and, and how we're able to tell that. So we'll see that. Also telling in creating our magazine. So rather than just showing you beautiful images of our jewelry, let me tell you a little bit more about what why is it interesting? Why is it exciting? Why do we love this piece of jewelry? Why did we select it? Um, also getting the word out and reaching farther through other means. So whether it's through an influencer program, people who are bloggers or Instagrammers, spreading the word that way, or using user-generated content. So if you have a beautiful piece of Benbridge jewelry and you take a picture and you're posting it to your social media, then we want to see that because that tells someone, here's how this jewelry really lives. Um, this is how a piece of jewelry is going to be a part of your life moving forward. And then an exciting piece of this puzzle is our store design. And so this evening we actually have our grand reopening of our South Center store and really looking at our um, store design and what we want it to do. And so I think we've built beautiful stores over time but wanted to make sure that those stores were warm, were engaging, uh, create, gave people reason to come through our doors more often. And so thinking about how retail is evolving, so we wanted to change our stores to meet the needs of today's customer. And so wanted a space that felt authentic, felt warm, felt comfortable, inviting. We wanted to provide education within our stores. Um, we wanted to create different moments in the store to engage and, and to engage with our jewelry and with our associates. Uh, show curation. So here is our new South Center store. Uh, it has a very different feeling than any other store we have. Wanted to create so it felt warm, so people could walk right through, um, that you felt compelled to come inside and explore. One of the areas um, that we created is, we call this the curio cabinet. And the curio cabinet has, rather than just showing jewelry, let's show how jewelry is made. And so in this curio cabinet, you can come up and see whether they're large gem crystals. Um, we can talk about the formation of gemstones and jewelry. Or in the center, I'm not sure if you can quite see it there, we have one of the original diamond polishing saws from Botswana that our head of merchandising carried back from Botswana um, for the store. And so you can learn about how jewelry is made. Come in. We have a whole host of nerdy gemologists um, who would be delighted to share with you about, uh, about our jewelry. We have more certified gemologists than anyone else in the country because of our desire to be those professionals. We also wanted to celebrate our watchmaking heritage. And so we created the Alchemy Lab. 
And so you can look into our watchmaker, whether you're walking down the mall or you're in our store, you can actually look into the watchmaking space and see all of his tools and see him at work on working on watches. We have in our office, um, our watchmakers sit kind of in the middle. And so as you walk by, it's like this fishbowl to look into. And it's always the most fascinating place every visitor wants to stop and, and watch. And so we wanted to bring a little bit of that into our store as well. We also put lots of different ways of engaging in the store. So rather than just being customer on one side, associate on the other, we have believed for many years in developing relationships and really developing a friendship. And so wanted to create a space that felt true to that spirit. And so lots of different ways to engage, whether you're looking at a piece of fashion jewelry, looking at an engagement ring, or looking at a fine timepiece. And just a couple of notes on our, our merchandise. One I had mentioned before about our unique brands that we offer that you know, we want to have things you can't find elsewhere, whether it's our Toscano I mentioned before, or our Ikuma diamonds, which are all mined in Canada. And you can locate your diamond exactly which mine it came from, the original rough weight that that diamond was, and the date it was polished. So you know this whole story of your diamond all the way from, from the beginning. Um, and then the other very exciting evolution that we're going to be launching this fall is in our, in our engagement ring collection. We're going to have an engagement ring collection that's going to be beautiful, but in addition to just these beautiful pieces, every one of them is customizable. Every one of them can be tweaked um, and can be changed. And with, if you design it in 24 hours, we can, oops, in 24 hours, uh, we will have a uh, lifelike image for you in a hologram machine. So you can look at your ring in any direction, three dimensions, before it's made. And not only can you see it within our store, but we'll also send you home with a little cone to put on your cell phone so you can show your friends the hologram of your ring that's about to be made. And we'll make that ring for you in two to three weeks. So really excited about this because no one else is able to do this in that speed, with that ability, and, and no one else has the, the technology to do it. So I think when we're thinking about evolution of experience, evolution of retail, um, this is a perfectly appropriate one and natural one for us because it's all about how are we able to take care of our customers, how are we able to continue to make it a joyful uh, and a meaningful process across the board. And so as we look at our 106 years of history, uh, I think that we've come to today through this wonderful evolution of, of thinking about our business and how do we fit each customer today? And how do we make sure that we continue to push the envelope, but also staying very true to our core values? And, and the biggest one being people. And when we're thinking about this month as, as Retail Jobs Month, I think there's no more important thing than, than who it is who's taking care of you within our stores. We had, a couple of years ago, we did a um, long-range planning session and in preparation, we had the facilitator spoke to every one of our executives. And she came back to me after and she goes, you know, I have talked to a lot of companies, a lot of really passionate companies, and I've never had such consistency across the board in answers to my questions. She said the consistent answer of what is your, what makes Benbridge different? Every single person said, our people. Every single person said, it's our people who make the difference. It's our people who we have to invest in, and it's our people who will provide that experience that's going to be like no other. And so I'm very proud of the team that we have at Ben Bridge and the team that we've built and will continue to build. So I believe in you know, that future is very bright thanks to a wonderful team. Uh, and, and we have great things ahead. So I'm excited to, to be here with all of you celebrate Retail Jobs Month and to share a bit of our story of Ben Bridge. And thank you guys very much for having me.
Thank you, Lisa. That was fascinating, not only about the business, but about the five generations and 106 years and the way you've grown and changed throughout the years. Thank you. Let's give her another hand. Before I get to our drawings, I just would like to point out one other event that's featured on the table. There's a little slip that's probably underneath your plate at this point. But right here in the same spot next week, there's going to be a fall hiring event. So um, that's put on together with the Thurston County Chamber and WorkSource. And Christina, do you just want to wave? You just gave me this basket, so I know you're here. Oh, she's back there, right by Benbridge Jewelers. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Christina. All right. The, uh, I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it's an echo dot. It sounds fancy. It's from Wright Systems, so thank you, Sean. It's an Amazon echo dot. And it goes to Scotty Joe McNulty with Elite Cleaning Services of Washington. And then from our community credit union, we have a beautiful fall basket that will go to Tado Veluso with Phillips Burgess. Probably. It's like a glass pumpkin and a nice blanket, and I don't know what else. And then I've heard that. Um, Linda with Window Genie has, a, has an Italian basket that she will connect with you on to receive. So getting the Italian themed basket from Window Genie is, oh, Leslie Panowitz with Panowitz Jewelers. Another family owned jeweler located here in Thurston County. And for the forum lunch, dun da da, Melissa Kirkaby with Olympia Federal Savings. All right, thank you all for being here. You may want to stop in Bed and Bridge and see what they have today or head through Macy's on your way out. Thank you for being here and thank you to Kevin with the Capitol Mall. We really appreciate it. We'll see you next month back at the Hotel RL. Thank you.